Hey everyone, this is Josh with another Bitcoin and blockchain tutorial available at chaintouts.com. Today I'm starting a new series called the Chain Tutorials Code Companion Series. In this series, I'm going to talk about some of the different code projects that I've developed available on the Chain Tutorials website that are related to Bitcoin, blockchain, and cryptocurrency topics. Uh, these are projects that I think are really interesting and they can help you break down and understand some of the different topics that are going on in this space, especially if you have a software development background. So today we're going to be discussing my new project, Micro Bit Adder. This is an offline Bitcoin address generation tool that runs entirely on Adafruit microcontrollers. So I got interested in doing this because uh, Offline address generation is a really secure way to generate and store cryptocurrency addresses. If you generate an address on a PC and you maybe you know, yank out the network cable or disconnect from Wi-Fi before you do so, and then store that address offline, that's a pretty secure way to store your addresses and private keys for long-term savings. But it's even more secure to generate an address and a private key on a device that's never been attached to any network at all. So I thought it would be interesting to try and get address generation working on a microprocessor platform. Now, this project presented a lot of interesting challenges along the way and a couple of different options for how I could go about it. So I wanna talk about the different components of this project and sort of break down some of the challenges that I faced along the way and describe how these different components work. The first interesting component of MicroBitAdder is actually a custom CircuitPython extension module. So CircuitPython is a version of CPython that's designed to run on microcontroller platforms like Arduino boards and the Adafruit uh, series of microcontrollers. It's a fork of MicroPython designed specifically to work with the Adafruit products, but it's compatible with a couple different devices as well. So what I decided to do was port over cryptographic primitive libraries from the Trezor firmware. So Trezor is an open source hardware wallet uh, that does everything from address generation to signing transactions with your funds. And this library is designed to be fast and efficient on uh, embedded platforms like the ones I'm working on. So I followed a guide available on the Adafruit Learn website to learn how to actually write a custom extension or a new module for the CircuitPython distribution. So I had to create my new module and then recompile the CircuitPython firmware to load on the boards that I wanted to use. So I wanna give a big shout out to Dave Astells who wrote the guide on the Adafruit website, as well as Lady Ada herself and Dan Halbert who offered me some help on GitHub when I had questions. Ultimately, I ended up designing uh, this project in my custom circuit Python extension for the M4 line of Adafruit boards. Uh, the M0 platform like used in the circuit Playground Express was simply too small to fit all the cryptographic libraries I needed. Now, one of my goals for this project was to support multiple different boards in different sizes, and hopefully not just one really big and powerful board. Luckily, the M4 line does have multiple shapes and sizes available, all the way from the Itsy Bitsy M4 up to the Grand Central M4, both of which I used for this project. There's a couple other boards out there, like the common uh, Metro M4 that could be used to run this software as well. And all of these boards conveniently have a cryptographic random number generator built in. So that comes into play later. Now, what this circuit Python custom extension does is it does all the sort of core Bitcoin cryptography needed to generate a private key and address. This module takes in entropy from the Python side. So the user has different options for how they generate the randomness needed. It hashes that entropy into a 32-bit uh, or 32-byte or rather and 256-bit private key. I use Trezor's elliptic curve cryptography implementation to derive the uncompressed public key then. This uncompressed public key is turned into an address 
by doing a SHA-256 hash followed by a RIPE-MD hash and then base 58 check encoding. And again, this is all done uh, in C in my custom circuit Python extension. Now, finally, the private key is also WIF or wallet import format encoded for easy export to an, a, another wallet in the future when you wanna spend the funds that you've saved in your offline paper wallet. Now, the core circuit Python code is pretty easy to implement from there. I do all of the heavy lifting in this custom circuit Python extension. And so all you need to do is import the uh, bit adder library in circuit Python and call a function to generate the address. This function takes in uh, two different uh, chunks of entropy that you generate, whether that be with a cryptographic random number generator or some other secure source. Uh, and that's used to generate the private key and is also needed by Trezor's libraries for the ECDSA K value. And what this function then returns is a simple Python tuple with the address and the WIF encoded private key. So that's all you really need to do to actually generate an address. Now I have a serial output as an option, so you could simply plug your board into a computer and uh, go ahead and grab your, an address, your new address and private key over serial. But to me, that somewhat defeats the purpose of having a completely offline address generator. You know, it definitely was useful for testing purposes, but I wanted to go a bit further and make sure that you could use this wallet completely offline. So the third component of micro bit adder is the available outputs connected to the microcontrollers. So I started with two options for this, both of which I think are pretty cool and useful. The first one is a thermal receipt printer. So I have my mini thermal receipt printer hooked up to my Grand Central M4 here. Now, when I go ahead and restart the board, it will automatically generate a new address and private key for me and actually print this out with the thermal receipt printer. So the printer warms up and then it prints out your address and your new private key. So I'll show you this on the little receipt paper there. Now, of course, this is a uh, public or a, rather a private key that everyone can see. So please don't send any funds to this address. Somebody who's watching these tutorials will steal them. But this is nice. Uh, this is an easy way to generate a paper wallet. So you could take this and just laminate this or stick it in a safe or bank safety deposit uh, with you know, a copy of the address somewhere and you can load up all your funds and later uh, use that with encoded private key to import that information uh, into a wallet for spending. So again, I have that hooked up to my uh, Metro Grand Central M4 here and the Adafruit Mini Thermal Receipt Printer. Uh, the next option that I wanted to have was a LCD display. So you could just read your new address and your private key, uh, copy them down somewhere for safekeeping, uh, and it's a nice easy way to read it in uh, a pretty big text form. So uh, what this screen does is it simply rotates showing the address and the WIF encoded private key uh, about every 30 seconds or so uh, to give you time to copy that down to wherever you want to put your paper wallet or your offline wallet for safekeeping. Uh, the address and the private key are too big to show on the same screen at the same time. Since this particular uh, large character LCD supports 20 by four uh, characters. So I have this wired up to the Itsy Bitsy M4 with a breadboard. Uh, so this is a really cool, really tiny little microprocessor. You could fit this uh, and make, you know, make this uh, type of project in a pretty small platform. And the character LCD and backpack are a little bit bigger, but it's still a nice compact, uh, offline wallet for generating your addresses. So the address is shown there and then every 30 seconds or so it rotates to show the WIF encoded private key. And for this I had to do some soldering for the first time since high school. Uh, shout out to my buddy and fellow uh, engineer Nathan Schomer who taught me how to solder in high school like one time and uh, I didn't forget what you taught me because this all actually runs.
So again, that's the Itsy Bitsy M4 with a simple character LCD. Uh, now this is an RGB LCD. They also have plain ones and uh, it uses the I2C backpack from Adafruit to make wiring everything up a little bit easier. So again, I think this was a really interesting and challenging project to implement. There was a lot of sort of moving parts and decisions that I had to make in terms of how to do uh, the cryptography that I needed and hook up outputs. Uh, as always with my side projects, I like to keep improving on them and doing bug fixes and adding new features. So there's a lot of potentially cool things that could be done with this project in the future. I mentioned that in order to keep things flexible, uh, I made it so that you pass in the entropy needed to do the cryptography like private key generation from the actual Python side. So conveniently, all the M4 boards have a cryptographic secure random number generator built into them. However, I wanted uh, future users of this to have some flexibility. So you could do things like hook up an accelerometer for entropy. You could hook up a keypad and allow the user of this to do diceware, like actually rolling dice or flipping coins for entropy, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, you could also hook up different outputs, like uh, you know the fancier uh, screens that allow you to draw things. Maybe you could do some kind of on-the-fly QR code generation if that's possible uh, on this microcontroller platform. And uh, I might support future formats that are important to people. So right now, this only supports legacy addresses for Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. Uh, it could be possible to implement Cash Adder for BCH and uh, generate things like SegWit addresses for BTC, uh, because a lot of people like to use those for cheaper fees. So as always, this video is accompanied by a article on the Chain Tutorials website, and that article does include links to the source code for Microbit Adder and uh, some of the threads where I asked questions and got help implementing this. And so you might find it uh, easier or more informative to read some of the actual code in text format. And as always, thank you very much for listening to this tutorial.